It's the first part of May, which means more unboxing videos coming your way. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Amanda Willis. I empower families to wellness authentically through biblically rooted principles. And I love to give you guys a peek into what living a wellness lifestyle rooted in biblical principles looks like on a kind of average day to day basis, whether that's what products we're choosing in our home, the groceries that we buy, um, all of those things, the different practices that we incorporate to give you the practical, like, okay, great. I have the knowledge, but what do I do with that now? What does that look like in today's world? That's why I share these things and peeks into our orders and stuff. So let's dive in. Today's unboxing is Thrive Market. This is our order for May. If you guys are not familiar with Thrive Market, Thrive Market is essentially an online grocery store kind of um, membership program similar to a Costco, but not because, you know, Costco has your toilet paper and all the things and furniture and all that. Thrive is just groceries, but it's going to have a lot of your range of groceries of um, a lot of your range of groceries that are anything from gluten-free, if you need those aspects to just your whole foods diet, which is what we try to do is just eat foods as close to the form as God created them to be. Now, Thrive does tend to be kind of some more of our processed versions of that. We don't eat a ton of them, but if you've been following along this channel for a little bit, you know that we are really working to be living more prepared and that, I was trying to open that without it. That worked real well, friends. They packed this oddly. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, we are working to live more prepared. We realized a couple years ago that we were relying very heavily on the fact that we lived right around the corner from a grocery store and we weren't stocking enough things in our own home. And if there was any sort of a little bloop or hiccup in the supply chain, that really hit us hard. And so we have chosen to really dive in and start building up a little bit of a supply. Um, learned that I believe it's the Department of Homeland Security, actually. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I think it was that department. Anyway, someone recommends, and I would actually agree with this, although I don't always love everything that our government recommends, um, of any, you know, any kind, not just, it's not a political statement. It's just a statement. So, uh, but they do recommend that the American household keep a minimum six months of food on hand. Oh, of course, our neighbors decide to start mowing their yard right as I'm filming. If you hear the lawnmower in the background, I am so sorry. <laughs> um, so we are working to build up our supplies so that if there's any sort of hiccup, which let's face it, we've seen, right, in our very fragile food supply chain, that we are prepared for that and we don't end up as impacted by it. Whoops. Also, with the way that food prices have kind of been going, it's almost an investment. It's doing a whole lot more than a savings account to have food ahead of time, right? With as fast as the prices are changing. Can I get an amen? All right, let's dive in, you guys. So this box did get a little beaten up on the outside. I don't know if you can tell that here in the video, but the good news is Thrive packs everything really well. So like I'm looking at this and you can't tell on the inside at all. So that's fantastic. We did get a few new things that hubby just wanted. I'm not one to buy a whole lot of pastas um, to have on hand that we get from the store. I prefer to find pastas from our local farmer's market eventually to make my own, but baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. So anyway, we've been getting some spaghetti on a regular basis just to build our stores with that, some biodynamic spaghetti. Hey, like this one. But we also this month added some organic farfall. I, I know I'm butchering this. I'm not Italian. I got lots of different ish in me, Polish, Irish, Danish, Swedish, like I, I got lots of ish, but I don't have Italian. So, farfall, farfalli, I don't know the proper pronunciation. 
what looks like bow tie pasta. Fun shape pasta, just to mix it up. I do love using that shape because of the way that the, um, the ridges are on it. I love to use something like that when I'm making a pesto or a sauce where you really want the ridges to grab it and soak it up. So like, I am a little excited to have some of this too. It's not just hubby that got excited about it because soon we will have our garden going and we'll be able to make some of our own pesto with our homegrown basil or even like I just did a cilantro pesto this last week. That was yummy. Okay some dark brown sugar to increase our stock on that. Sugar is one of those things that as long as it's packed well, it's not going to go bad quickly. So brown sugar, you want it to be sealed, right? And it's an individual bag because as soon as you open it, it's going to be exposed to air and then it's going to start getting hard if it, you can't keep all the air out of it. So as much as I do love to buy a lot of things in bulk, um, and to keep things in like five gallon buckets, brown sugar's not one of those. I prefer to keep them in bags like this and uh, I can put them in a five gallon bucket then, but it's not going to be just like every time I open the gamma lid on the bucket, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, this month was our like stock up coffee month because we've been right on the cusp of going out each time and that's cutting it too close for our taste. So we love our whole bean coffee and to grind it right before it changes the flavor. Of course, it's also then going to release the most health benefits if you grind it right before, but it the, the flavor is just better. It just is. If you haven't tried it, try it. I promise you it's worth it. Like I do a lot of things to simplify the day to day. I could grind a whole bunch ahead of time. It doesn't taste the same. It just doesn't. So we grind it every day right before our cup of coffee. Um, this is the decaf Swiss water process from Thrive, the Peruvian blend. It is a good like medium blend decaf. And if you're not familiar with water process, decaffeination process, it is a process of decaffeinating coffee that does not use a chemical solvent. So most coffees that are out there on your grocery store shelf, unless they are labeled water process or Swiss water process being a particular type of water processing, then the way that they have taken the caffeine out of that bean has been through a chemical solvent. And a lot of us are sensitive to that chemical that's used. It ranges um, what is used, but it's pretty harsh on the system. And so we prefer to go the route of the water process. And I also feel like it doesn't make it I don't know, there's a weird off flavor with some decaf coffee and you don't get that at all with the Thrive coffee or any water process coffee I've had before. Then I wish their decaf came in the same size bag as the caffeinated Thrive. Anybody from Thrive Market watching this? That would be amazing. Would you consider it? I probably should add feedback because these little bags, you just have to order more of them and this is a better deal when it's the 24 ounces than it is in the 12 ounces like one of these is less than two of the smaller bags you know so this is our french roast whole bean it is delicious our favorite coffee that we've gotten that's not direct from a local coffee roaster which we do love to support but when you drink as much coffee as we do and you are budget cautious the other coffees are a special treat. So we have our Celtic sea salt, one of my top two favorite salts. It is phenomenal. It comes from the French sea over in Bretagne, in that province of Bretagne in France. And it is dried really nicely. It has, it maintains all of its minerals. And when you look at it, you will notice it is gray. It is not white. Your white sea salt does not have the minerals in it anymore. So if you're buying sea salt from the store and it is white, you're not getting any better than your iodized salt. It's, just, it's there's nothing there. It's your Celtic sea salt, your Himalayan pink salt, your real salt from Redmond's. Those are going to be um, your salts that actually have minerals in them and health benefit. When you have that natural balance of minerals, then you don't have to worry about how much salt am I consuming because it's balancing out your body 
across the mineral spectrum over just giving you sodium. So it's very, very helpful. Now, if you watched my video on stretching your food budget, you know, and maybe I've mentioned this in a few other videos as well, I'm not a huge pork fan. I try to avoid pork most of the time unless it's very, 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 very well sourced. And that's mostly because my husband really likes it. When Before I met him, I hadn't had pork for I think six or seven years because I had read Jordan Rubin's The Maker's Diet and he dives into what it was in there and then I think it was in the book What Would Jesus Eat um, that is no maybe it was what the Bible says about healthy living I read all three of those right around the same time when I very first was introduced to the fact that the Bible has things to say about our health and um, so I can't remember whether it was what the Bible says about healthy living the maker's diet which I'm rereading now so I could tell you soon or the um, the other one, what would Jesus eat? I can't remember which of those, but they talked about pork and a lot of the things we know, not just pork, but also shellfish and stuff, like reasons that we know today of how they can be toxic to the body that we didn't know scientifically before, but God in his wisdom had told his people to avoid eating. And so I'm very particular about the sourcing of pork. I don't believe it's a salvation issue at all. In fact, if you think it is, we've got to talk some more theology Moving on in our order because we still have lots to go and I don't want to keep you here all day. We have happy hour to get to. Okay, so organic marinara sauce. I will be honest, this is not my favorite marinara. It's your very basic marinara. You're going to want to add things to this if you're using it as a spaghetti sauce, but I always do. Any sauce that I get that um, that is like jarred or anything, I'm always adding to it. I'm adding onions and garlic and whatever veggies we have on hand and you know all the different things, some more spices. So I tend to increase this. The reason we've been buying the jarred is right now, we've not been able to grow enough tomatoes in the past. We will see this year, I have nine tomato plants right? No, 12 tomato plants. See how many of them survive all the way to the ground and then through. And we have a lot of squirrels and birds in our backyard now. So <laughs> the goal is to get a lot of our own jarred, but for now we're using the easy button. It's already done better than not having it and waiting for perfection. So we use this as pizza sauce. We use it as pasta sauce. It's your basic marinara. And then you can kind of jazz it up the way you want to jazz it up it's so it's not bad clearly we're buying it <laughs> consistently but i will say if you're looking for just your dump and go and you're not going to add anything to it depends on what your flavor profile is it's if you like very very basic simple that's what you'll like if you're more of a foodie like we are or more of a food more of more of a foodie like my husband and i are there we go then you might want to jazz it up a little. We got some pepper cheese. Speaking of jazzing things up a little bit, friends, these are so delicious to take and pour over a roast or over chicken in the crock pot with some Italian dressing and you have like the world's easiest dinner. So good, delicious. All right. And then we have more ketchup, more mustard. Both of these are clean condiments. You've heard me say it before. If you followed my channel and my unboxing videos for a while, I got goals of making all of our own. But again, we will get there. Right now, I'm more concerned about actually having the item available, building my skills, I just got a cheese making set for my birthday uh, to move on to the hard cheeses from my home sitting family dairy course that I've been walking through. So I'm really excited because I had kind of been stuck at some of the, not stuck, but I had, um, I've just been at the soft cheeses since I haven't had the molds and the rennet and the, um, 
proper dairy thermometer, honestly. I've just been like using a basic thermometer. <laughs> so I got a good dairy thermometer and my parents got me all that for um, my birthday, along with some wax and a brush to be able to do like full on waxed cheeses and age the cheese. So excited. So I'm working on those kind of skills. The condiments will come. <laughs> I know there's an easy, if you guys like, um, see how well they wrap this. If you guys like the Westiny Price Foundation um, style book, oh, what is um, Sally Fallon's book? Why is it escaping me? Nourished Kitchen? No. Nourished Kitchen was the blog that I followed that was Jenny McGrother. You've heard of it? Um, nourishing traditions. That's it. I believe there is a fermented ketchup recipe in there that I made 10 years ago. It was very good. It's just, I only made it one time and then that was it. And that was before I met my husband, the man who eats all the ketchup in our house. <laughs> I made it for myself and I was like, I don't ever eat this. So, but that would be a good like long-term fermentation thing to do. If you sterilize the jar, you can ferment things for long-term food storage. That could be a good option. We need to try that eventually. We grab some more avocado oil. It's not my number one go-to oil of choice, but it is a decent oil. And I do like to try and mix up the oils that we're using. So this is just some basic avocado oil. And I know my hubby really likes to cook with it. I love cooking with my coconut oil and with butter and ghee and animal fats that have been rendered. Okay. Those are always my first choices. This is some more apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is one of those things. Yes, I started making some last year, but I am one who believes you can't have too much apple cider vinegar on hand because kept properly, this will last like a really, really, really long time, like forever. <laughs> um, it will just change flavor and such. So kept properly, apple cider vinegar will last basically forever. And I do have some, I started making it last year. I will hopefully be making more. We have a crab apple tree in our backyard now. And um, I would love to make some crab apple cider vinegar. We'll see, we'll see how that goes this year. However, in the meantime, again, building our stores, apple cider vinegar is one of those things that it is so versatile. You can use it in hair care and skin care and detox baths and medicinally and um, cooking, of course, and dressings and all sorts of things, marinades and all the things. So we got more apple cider vinegar. It is the raw organic with the mother. So the only thing I would not use this for is canning. And that's because you don't know the percentage acidity. Um, it's not regulated. It's gonna change as it's raw and fermenting. And so you don't know the percent acidity. And then you also are going to be heating it up if you're canning, if you're making pickles or whatever, you're gonna boil it and then you ruin all the properties anyway. So don't get the unpasteurized stuff for that. Save that for the good stuff. All right. Mary's Gone Crackers, super seed and regular. We really like both of these. They're great for charcuterie boards, you know, with soups, all your normal cracker things, picnics in the spring and summer. We plan to be going to the nearby lakes here in Casper and bringing some of those with us. So we have a wide variety of crackers. We've got our Mary's Gone, and then we've got some more of the Jovial Sourdough Einkorn Crackers. Again, when I get my, I have my sourdough starters going still, I have kept them alive through our move. But once I get back into my baking routines with sourdough and start experimenting more on some things, baking our own crackers is on the list. But until we get a dehydrator, I don't think that I'll be getting them to where they'd be shelf stable very long. Okay, then, oh my goodness. Oh, we have so much paper in this. But we've got all of this glass in here and all of it traveled really, really well. This guy did such a fantastic job. So there's two of these. 
our olive oil. If you've seen any of our unboxing videos before, you know I adore this olive oil. It is one of the best like everyday olive oils that I have seen anywhere. It's pure, it is your 100% olive oil, and it is a decent price and it tastes fantastic. So you don't have to worry about this one being cut with soy or canola or any of the other cheap oils like so many places do to their oils these days. And they don't have to put it on the label. So you kinda gotta know what to look for. But these are single origin and fantastic. And the oil does eventually go rancid. It does last a decent amount of time and because we use so much of it, we probably go through about one and a half of these a month, um, depending on the month and if I'm making dressings or whatnot, but it's good to have some backup built, right? Okay. We are almost there, friends. Thank you for joining us for this today. For Julia Roberts and um, the Princess Diaries. I just said Julia Roberts. Wow. That would be wrong. Julie Andrews and the Princess Diaries. But she says, thank you for being here today. Thank you for being here today. Can chicken breast. Again, good to have on the shelf. Lasts a really long time. I think it's best by 2020, 20, 2020, 2024. How many 20s are in that? Best by 2024, um, by November of. But that's a best buy not an expires buy, it's going to be good past that. So these are foods that we've got in rotation. We are not just stocking up and stocking up and stocking up in our home and buying foods that are on whatever prepper list or anything like that. That's not how we are living prepared. We are using the foods that we eat on a regular basis and we are working to build a bigger store of those so that we have a supply in case we can't get it. But then that we rotate through those foods. So this is not like, hey, we just went out and bought a whole bunch of stuff because we don't know what's gonna happen, but it's not stuff that we eat like we did at the beginning of 2020. <laughs> Anybody else? When we very first realized, hey, we've been relying on the grocery store too much was when um, we started noticing things on the grocery shelves that like weren't there. And so then we kind of panicked a little bit and immediately went out and bought a whole bunch of peanut butter and a whole bunch of beans, which we do eat beans, so that wasn't a big deal. But we very rarely eat peanut butter. Like we should get like small things of peanut butter because occasionally we'll crave it and we'll want just a little. But I'm talking, we got like several big old things of peanut butter because it's just what came to mind and we don't need it. And now I feel like we're trying to go through our whole thing of peanut butter so we don't waste it. And that was dumb. Don't do that. If you like peanut butter, stock up on peanut butter and have that as part of your food rotation. But if you're like us and you don't eat peanut butter very often, then maybe, maybe you have one thing of it, but it's not going to be your staple because you're going to get tired of it real fast if you don't normally eat it. We got some tamari. This is fantastic. We eat a lot of Asian style foods. We love to marinate stuff with some tamari. And then also, it is a really good food to have on hand so that if you are having to kind of cut your budget or resort to some of your emergency food supply and you've got a lot of rice and things and you want to mix up the flavors, it's good to have condiments like tamari and apple cider vinegar. <laughs> your spices and things. We have another jar of marinara sauce. Who watching this is a Boy Meets World fan for me? Or for me? Who, who watching this is also a Boy Meets World fan? And can name the Unless They're in Marinara Sauce episode. It doesn't have to be the official episode name. I'm not sure I can tell you the official episode name. But if you know, you know. All right, and then last but not least, we have several teas, you guys. I'm gonna fly through these teas as quickly as I can. Partly because Hubby and I were at Taco Fest earlier. How fun is that? Um, we were at Taco Fest downtown here in Casper and that's why my hair's a little windblown because it's starting to get windy. 
and we want to go to happy hour and get some more food because the tacos were good but they were kind of smaller street tacos and that was several hours ago so anyway okay there we go let's move that flap why did i not move that flap earlier tease we have double double the fun no i'm just kidding double make gum I was trying not to. I was trying not to. Two boxes of peppermint. Hopefully soon we will be. We have to wait till after our last frosty, but um, we'll be able to plant some peppermint here and grow our own mint, and then I can dehydrate it and get us our own peppermint tea, so that we don't have to buy quite as much. It's funny because my hubby loves his peppermint tea, and I remember. Um, first introducing him to using peppermint oil instead of just the peppermint tea bag because one drop of peppermint essential oil of the Vitality is equivalent to, what is it, 26 cups? Don't quote me on that. I might be off like two cups one direction. It might be 24 cups or 25. I think it's 26 cups off the top of my head of peppermint tea, like the strength of it and the constituents in there. So he really enjoyed that. But what he likes to do even more is take his peppermint tea bag and then drop the peppermint vitality essential oil onto the tea bag and really oomph that peppermint. So if you like peppermint, you get it. Then we have Earl Grey, my absolute favorite if it's cloudy outside especially. And then two boxes of Sancha Green. Green tea is so fantastic. And that one is really great because although I love honey in my tea, I don't want to have to put honey in my tea. I want it to be an option. And that one's like not bitter or anything. And so it's really, really nice and smooth. And then organic raspberry leaf, fantastic. If you are a woman, you do not have to be a woman to drink raspberry leaf, but it is going to really benefit women's health a lot, raspberry leaf does. So, all right, friends, that is this month's Thrive Order. If you are not yet a customer with Thrive Market and you are wanting to check them out and give them a try, be sure you use my promo link that is down in the description below or somebody else's that you know, but I've got one for you right down in the bottom and get yourself a discount on that first order. Don't be like me. And I ordered without a discount and I had several friends who had promo codes but I didn't think to use them. So save money on your first food order. Lord knows right now, we all could use to save money on our food orders, right? So save yourself some money using the referral link in the comments below. And if you order from Thrive and you have some things that you did not see on here that you've watched through and you're like, hey, I think you might really like X, Y, or Z, please let me know in the comments. One of you guys told me about the loose leaf teas. I still need to check those out that Thrive carries. Um, so I want to look into those from last time. And I so appreciate when you guys share things like that because that's how we learn. So thank you so much. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you for being here today. And until next time, take care friends. Cheers.